Hi guys, thank you for joining me on the channel. I wanna do something different going forward. I wanna provide a weekly news segment. The biggest news this week is Trump being disqualified from running for president. They cite section three of the 14th amendment, which basically states that if you're engaged in an insurrection, you cannot run for office. However, they also cite the most recent court case where Trump was indicted on four separate counts. But when you look at this indictment, you see conspiracy to defraud, conspiracy to obstruct, actual obstruction, and conspiracy against rights. The reason why you don't see insurrection in this indictment is because they've already charged Trump with insurrection in the Congress. And because of double jeopardy, you cannot be charged with the same crime twice. But that didn't stop Colorado. They are going to disqualify him for running for an insurrection that he was found to not have committed. Do you see how badly they don't want this guy to run? There's a bigger issue with this court ruling from Colorado, and that's found in Section 5 of the 14th Amendment. Section 5 states that the power to do this rests with Congress, not the state Congress, and not the state governor or local officials. It rests only with Congress. And there's a very good reason for doing this. I'm going to let Alan Dershowitz explain it. I think he could explain it better than I can. Section 5 says... The Congress, that means the United States Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate, the Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. They give the power to Congress, not to the states. And it's obvious why they did it. It's so clear. Just know a little bit of history, Judge Ludic. Please read a book about the Civil War, Professor Tribe. Uh, and Jamie Raskin, go, you know, talk to people who understand what was going on during the Reconstruction period. So here you have a bunch of <clears throat> radical Republicans, Republicans in those days were the party of Abraham Lincoln, <clears throat> radical Republican people who want Reconstruction. And they, don't, they want to make sure that that's not thwarted by a bunch of old Confederates who are going to take over Congress or take over the, the Senate. So they preclude them from running. Now, we have to decide who makes the decision as to who is an insurrectionist or uh, a rebellion. Can you imagine these radical Republican Northerners saying, hey, I got a great idea. Why don't we leave that decision to the states, including Alabama Mississippi, Louisiana, all the states that were just fighting us, the secession of states, the ones that don't want Reconstruction, Georgia, South Carolina, that's who the states were. If you left it to the states, you would have been totally undercutting what you wanted to do. So of course they didn't give it to the states to determine how to interpret and construe the statute or what procedural safeguards should apply. They left it to the Congress shall have the power, not the Congress and the states, not the states, just the Congress. That power rests only with Congress, but it doesn't stop them. They're doing everything they can. They really don't want Trump to get in for a second term. Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden was subpoenaed by James Comer and the Republicans. The FBI and the DOJ will not investigate Hunter Biden under any circumstances, so it's left to the people in Congress only the Republicans, because the Democrats have no problem with what Hunter Biden is doing. Hunter Biden was subpoenaed. He showed up, and instead of going in for his deposition, he decided to stand outside and hold a press conference. Here's some of what he said. I'm here today to answer at a public hearing any legitimate questions Chairman Comer and the House Oversight Committee may have for me. That's already a scam. He's here to answer only legitimate questions. Who decides what's legitimate, Hunter? You? So he's already playing games. And I'm here today to acknowledge that I've made mistakes in my life and wasted opportunities and privileges I was afforded. For that, I'm responsible. For that, I'm accountable. And for that, I'm making amends. So not only is he playing the sympathy card here, but he's also not denying what he's been accused of. So he's coming out with this big speech and trying to give all this background about how sorry he is. I believe that's also to elicit sympathy, but he's not coming out and actually denying it. If I accused you of stealing money, the first thing you would say is, I didn't steal your money if you were innocent. 
but he comes out and has to do this whole charade about his addiction and he's trying to invoke sympathy, but he's also not denying any of the things that the Republicans have accused him of. But I'm also here today to correct how the MAGA right has portrayed me for their political purposes. Hunter Biden, a Biden, is claiming that the Republicans are playing political games. Isn't that, isn't that rich? I am first and foremost a son, a father, a brother, and a husband from a loving and supportive family. I'm proud to have earned degrees from Georgetown University and Yale Law School. I'm proud of my legal career and business career. I'm proud of my time serving on a dozen different boards of directors. And I'm proud of my efforts to forge global business relationships. So we call that uh, convincing statements or convincing arguments. What he's saying on its face, these actual statements, that he graduated from law school, he sat on the board of these corporations. Those are in fact true, but he doesn't, he's trying to tie that to the allegations that we know he's lying about. It's another tactic that deceitful people do, especially politicians and especially him. For six years, MAGA Republicans, including members of the House committees who are in a closed door session, session right now, have impugned my character, invaded my privacy, attacked my wife, my children, my family, and my friends. Okay. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but he talks about his wife. Do you know that Hunter Biden, he lost a brother, Bo Biden. Joe Biden talks about his son, Bo Biden, uh, dying uh, pretty often. What a terrible tragedy that is to lose a son. Um, I can only imagine. Hunter Biden is banging Bo Biden's wife. He mentions his wife. He's with the wife of his dead brother. They ridiculed my struggle with addiction. They belittled my recovery. Not a single person has mentioned anything negative about his addiction or his recovery. He's also charged with crimes that he committed after he got clean. All of the tax evasion charges and everything that he's done with the latest indictment occurred from 2020. And they have tried to dehumanize me, all to embarrass and damage my father, who has do devoted his entire public life to service. Nobody's out to get you, Hunter. You've done this all to yourself. You've been afforded more privileges than anyone else simply because your dad is the most corrupt president in this country's history. You took a deduction of $700,000 for hookers, and you took these deductions and filed false tax returns after you were clean, if you ignore the cocaine they found at the White House, which nobody seems to care about. This is the same person that appeared in court for child support payments. Hunter shows up in a private jet and then claims to the judge that he has no money. This is insane. In this press conference, Hunter does something else. Originally, we were told over and over and over again that Joe Biden never discussed business with his son or his brother. It never even came up, ever. How many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. Do you stand by your statement that you did not discuss any of your son's overseas business yes, dealings? Yes, I stand by that statement. Then when some of the truth started to drip out, that narrative changed to Joe Biden was never in business with his son. Maybe he discussed it, but he wasn't actually in business. I'm curious if the White House and the president still stand behind his comment that he's never been involved and has never even uh, spoken to his son about his business. So I've, I've been asked this question a million times. The answer is not going to change. The answer remains the same. The president ha was never in business with his son. I just don't have anything else to add. Okay. Now, during this press conference, watch Hunter put another spin on it when it comes to his father's involvement in his corrupt businesses. Let me state as clearly as I can, 
my father was not financially involved in my business, not as a practicing lawyer, not as a board member of Burisma, not in my partnership with a Chinese private businessman, not in my investments at home nor abroad, and certainly not as an artist. There is no evidence to support the allegations that my father was financially involved in my business because it did not happen. They just keep moving the goalpost back and back and back. Every time more of the truth seems to drip out, they change their narrative. I have no idea what the next narrative is going to be. I guess it depends what they find. Let's listen to Hunter Biden and this press conference. And they have taken the light of my dad's love. The light of my dad's love for me and presented it as darkness. They have no shame. These same committee chairmen have engaged in unprecedented political interference in what would have already been a five-year investigation of me. Yet, here I am, Mr. Chairman, taking up your offer when you said we can bring these people in for depositions or committee hearings, whichever they choose. Well, I've chosen. I am here to testify at a public hearing today to answer any of the committee's legitimate questions. Republicans do not want an open process where Americans can see their tactics, expose their baseless inquiry, or hear what I have to say. What are they afraid of? I'm here. I'm ready. You say you're here for the deposition and then you leave. You get in your car and you leave. This is a joke. You proved that you were available. You could have made it. Instead, you made it everything about yourself like you always do because you're a Biden. You show up, you give this press conference, won't take a single question. You tell James Comer and all the Republicans that you're here and then you get in your car and drive away. Typical Biden bullshit. The next thing in the news is Vivek Ramaswamy. Van Jones over at CNN, first he was crying when Trump got elected, but now apparently Vivek has him shaken. The smug, condescending way that he just spews this poison out yeah. is very, very dangerous because he won't stop Trump, but he's going to outlive Trump by about 50 years. And you're watching the rise of an American demagogue that is a very, very despicable person. Yeah. And I, I'm, I literally, I, I, was, I was shaking listening to him talk because a lot of people don't know that is one step away from Nazi propaganda coming out of his mouth. And this was Vivek's response. I think it's excellent. And then you get the mainstream media. You got this character Van Jones on CNN afterwards saying, this is the rise of an American demagogue who's going to live 50 years longer than Trump. This is dangerous. I am shaking. That's what he says. <laughs> Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> At a certain point. Just shut the fuck up. Van Jones at CNN. I'm kind of torn in Vivek. I like some of the things he says, but to me it seems like it's a little bit rehearsed. I like that he has a pair of balls and he has no problem calling out CNN and MSNBC. It's nice to see someone else do it other than Trump. I do believe he has a future in politics. I just don't think he's even going to make the next debate because his poll numbers are so low. That's all I got for now. I hope you enjoy this segment and I hope to see you on the next one. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. It will motivate me to make more. Thank you for watching.